So this is a talk about uh, constraint satisfaction problems. And <coughs> instead of giving you the formal definition, let me give you an example. So the example is the problem of two coloring a graph. The input here is a graph and a set of two colors. And the goal is to color the vertices of the graph so that no two adjacent, no two adjacent vertices share the same color. So this is a constraint satisfaction problem in the sense that we can imagine a variable sitting on every vertex that can take uh, uh, Q values, we call them colors, and a constraint uh, sitting on every edge that basically forbids every coloring uh, for which uh, the variables of the constraint, the variables of the edge, uh, get the, the same value. So, uh, I, of course, in um, general constraint satisfaction problems, any given constraint could be associated with more than one variable, uh, with more than two variables. So, in that sense, we have a hypergraph instead of a graph in general. And, you know, we could have different constraints. So, uh, each constraint could forbid an arbitrary set of assignments for its associated variables. So, we have more than just coloring constraints. So, for example, in the problem known as three set, our variables take two values, either true or false. Each constraint contains exact, exactly three variables and forbids exactly one assignment. So, for example, this constraint here forbids the assignment true, true, false for the variables x, y, and z. Okay? So, this is roughly what constraint satisfaction problems are. And they are fundamental in computer science and in many other areas, like artificial intelligence and bioinformatics. And naturally, we would like to be able to solve them efficiently, uh, fast. Unfortunately, this seems unlikely because uh, in general, the constraint satisfaction problems are NP-hard, which means that in general, we cannot do much better than a brute force in the space of configurations for the uh, for the variables of, of the of the constraint satisfaction problem, which is a problem because this this space grows exponentially with the number of variables. Okay. So uh, in the light of this fact, a common direction people take is try to identify interesting families of constraint satisfaction problem of instances of constraint satisfaction problems where a solution is guaranteed to exist and can be found efficiently. So let me give you an example again in the problem of two coloring. So now imagine that we restrict our attention in graphs that are triangle free. So this is a restricted family uh, of graphs. And a recent result of Molloy says that if the number of colors, so if Q is more than delta over log delta, where delta is a degree of the graph, then a solution exists and can be found efficiently. So this is interesting because uh, the naive bound, the easy bound for a graph of degree delta is to use delta plus one colors. And uh, you know, Molloy's results go goes way beyond. And as, as we will see later, it can do um, much more. So we'll see. So, um, right, so how do we prove that families of constraint satisfaction problems are interesting, uh, are tractable? So um, one way to do so is to apply a stochastic local search algorithm on them. I will explain what this means and show that it works, that it can find a solution. Okay, so what is a stochastic local search algorithm? Again, uh, in our running example, in the problem of two coloring, so it starts at an arbitrary configuration of, of the problem, which is most likely not a valid one, so it's not a solution. And then while valid constraints exist, so these are valid constraints, it focuses one, on one, say um, this one, and take some random action to, to, to fix it. So, you know, it could possibly choose new values for the variables of, of the constraint at random. Okay? So, um, like this. So, uh, the question is, when does this random process end? Uh, how much time will it take to terminate? Right? So, will it terminate and is it efficient? So, um, this is a whole... This, uh, you know, uh, a whole uh, area in computer science, like uh, understanding uh, uh, these things. And, um, um, you know, a priori, it's, uh, 
it's not an easy task because when you try to fix a constraint, you know, you could violate another constraint and this could keep going. So it's not clear at all what happens. So uh, in the last decade, there has been a breakthrough in the analysis of this kind of algorithms due to Moser and Tardos, who, sh who showed that um, basically a simple stochastic local search algorithm of this form can efficiently find solutions that are promised by a statement in probabilistic combinatorics called the Lovas local lemma. So this is a very, very powerful tool in combinatorics that basically says, so when, when, when it's applied to constraint satisfaction problems, that if your input problem is sparse enough in a, in a certain sense, then the problem has a solution. This used to be a, an existential statement, so there was no efficient algorithm for it, up until 30 years ago when Moser and Tanders uh, made it constructive an by analyzing a simple algorithm like this. And this has inspired uh, you know, um, a whole uh, load of work, so a plethora of papers. And um, I myself I have been quite active you know, in this area, uh, trying to extend their, uh, their tools and their uh, techniques for analyzing uh, this type of algorithms. So this is what I've been doing. For uh, the rest of the talk, I will talk to you about a concrete op open problem that I've been thinking about these days, which has to do with random constraint satisfaction problems. To, to, to set the scene and make uh, things concrete, let me focus on, uh, again, the problem of Q coloring, but this time on random graphs. So for this talk, a random graph, it's the GNM model, which is basically the uniform distribution over the family of graphs with n vertices and exactly m edges. Right? So the, what we care about here is how the Q coloring problem behaves as the density. This is the ratio between the number of constraints to the number of variables increases. Naturally, you know, when the density is, is very low, we expect the problem to be easy because we have few constraints. And as the density increases, um, we expect it to be hard. And indeed, this is a very natural and very well-studied model. And we know quite a few things about it. One thing we know is that there exists this satisfiability uh, threshold, this density around Q log Q, above which with high probability, uh, so, uh, so random graphs with higher density are known to be uh, not Q-colorable with high probability, and below which uh, these graphs are Q-colorable with high probability. So there is this you know, phase transition here. And mind you, I mean, let me stress that this is about the existence of solutions and not about algorithms for finding them. And if we, you know, if we ask this question, what about algorithms? There is another bizarre phenomenon that takes place, which is basically, yeah. Oh, so, so Q here is the number of colors. Uh, it's a density, which is which is basically, yeah. So the the average degree is twice the density. Okay. So um, right. So if we care about algorithms, there is this bizarre phenomenon that takes place which basically says that all the algorithms we know stop working at a density way below the satisfiability threshold, basically one half the threshold. And um, this is a phenomenon uh, that has been you know, uh, uh, noticed and uh, well studied uh, in the area. And it turns out it's not a coincidence in the following sense. So, as the density increases from, um, from uh, being lower than the algorithmic barriers thresholds, here uh, is where our algorithm stops, and it goes beyond this, there is a, a strange phenomenon that happens. There's a, a dramatic change in the solution space geometry of the problem. So here you should think of each gray point as a solution of the problem. And Below the so uh, sorry yeah be, um, before the algorithmic barrier threshold, 
this, uh, this picture here says that the solutions look like a ball. So they are very close to, the, to each other in Hamming distance. So you can jump from a solution to another by changing, say, the value of one variable. So it's a very well connected space, right? But right after this threshold, this giant ball shatters into pieces, right? That are very far from each other in, uh, in Hamming distance. And moreover, if you want to go from one piece to another piece, from one cluster to another cluster, then you should go through what we call energy barriers, which are basically configurations that violate many constraints. Right? And this seems to make um, our algorithms hard, uh, it, it makes it hard for our algorithms to navigate this kind of space. Okay, why am I telling you all this? So it turns out, oh, okay, and by the way, this is not, uh, uh, this is not just for two coloring, this is a universal phenomenon for pretty much every, every random constraint satisfaction prob problem people care about. So, uh, and this was first predicted non-rigorously non by statistical physicists, and in recent years it has been proven, uh, you know, um, rigorously. Okay, so the reason I'm telling you all this is that, remarkably, if you apply Molois's algorithm to random graphs, then it matches the algorithmic barrier in a sense that it works all the way uh, up to the algorithmic barrier for random graphs. And this is quite remarkable because the only assumption Molloy's uh, theorem makes is that the absence of triangle, that the girth is at least four, which is quite uh, you know, uh, uh, spectacular in the sense that it, it characterizes all the, the existence of solution and the tractability for most sparse random graphs. So this is, you know, uh, quite remarkable, especially and on a technical level, because our previous works, you know, used uh, many more properties of random graphs to show uh, the same thing, right? So uh, this question I care about, and I would like to, to explore, is, is this a general phenomenon? Is it true that um, for any, deterministic family of constraint satisfaction problems that has constant girth, the underlying hypergraph has constant, constant girth, can it be, be solved efficiently up to, up, the, up, to, up to the corresponding algorithmic barrier threshold for, for random CSPs? So can we generalize Molloy's result from the Q-coloring problem to every constraint satisfaction problem of interest? So, and, you know, this is the question. While Molloy's technique do not seem to generalize, uh, uh, you know, uh, in a black box way to every other CSP, there is strong evidence that, support, that supports that the answer to this, question, to this question is positive, and this is what, uh, you know, I'm exploring and, uh, and I would like to prove. Okay, that's it.